In this video, we are going to be talking about how you can swing slower and yet hit shots further. Because it is a question a lot of you guys ask, you know, how can the pros look like they swing it so smooth? How can they look so in control and yet when they hit it, it sets off like a bullet and flies such a long distance. And I'm excited to be covering exactly that within this video. And if you are new to the Swing Quest channel, make sure that you hit the subscribe button now. We release weekly videos on how you can better improve your game. So what is the secret that these pros are using? Well, first of all, it isn't really a secret. This is all about using the body and the club in the most effective manner. So the first thing to understand about speed is that it is created incrementally. As you start to move down towards the golf ball, speed is continually applied until the point of impact and then just afterwards. So the first thing you wanna to do to get this more controlled looking powerful motion is to focus firstly on the backswing. Now the reason that the backswing is so important is because it allows you to build up the potential of energy that you can deliver onto the golf ball. You need to be able to generate enough turn, enough width and enough movement off the golf ball so as you start to come through, you have time and you have that potential to deliver the power in a smooth fashion. So to give yourself that potential of speed, we need to create a big wide turn away from the ball. Now a turn for many golfers, as they'll understand it, is the shoulders rotating away from the ball with the middle of the back facing down towards the target. Now this is correct, but I want you to start thinking about your backswing turn a little bit differently. It's not just what you're doing with the upper body that counts. If you're somebody who struggles with backswing turn, one area to look at is what you're doing with the trail hip. So for a right-hander, the right-hand hip. What a lot of people try and do is turn the upper body whilst restricting movement on the lower. If you want to achieve a full turn, allow that right hip, allow that trail hip to rotate as well. If you can turn that trail hip, it allows the upper body to follow. It allows you a greater range of motion. Another way that you can increase the amount of turn on your backswing is by lifting the lead heel, so the left heel for a right-handed golfer. If you can turn that right hip, if you can turn the body, if you allow that heel to rise, it actually gives you more range of motion yet again. It gives you more freedom to be able to turn fully. Now, why is this important? It all goes back to what we spoke about when we mentioned creating power incrementally, allowing it to build up as we move through impact. Let me explain it this way. If you have a backswing which looks a little bit more like this, so the left arm just about gets to parallel, the upper body doesn't turn fully. If you move down into impact, there's only going to be so much speed that you can create in this little section of the swing. So if you think about the amount of real estate that your club and your hands have to move through here, you would have to apply a lot of energy and pull downwards really hard to try and create speed. Now you still can hit the ball a decent distance from that backswing, but remember, we're talking about how to make it look smooth, how to have a much more fuller range of motion and still propel that ball out there whilst looking relaxed. Now, if you have this full turn, so this full rotation up to the top of the swing, all of a sudden now you have so much more room and so much more time to apply that speed. That's why it won't be rushed. That's why it's gonna enable you to be able to incrementally increase that speed. That's obviously my word for today. So we've established that we want that full turn because it gives you time to build up that speed. And this is, as mentioned, the setup. This is what allows the possibility of having that smooth release of power through the ball. But how do we action that? What are the thoughts that we can have to smoothly apply that speed through impact? Now, the first thing that we have to get absolutely nailed down is that we don't want to rush at the ball. It's not going anywhere. It's not moving, fingers crossed. So we can actually take our time, especially in this transition phase of the swing, as we move from the top of the backswing 
into the downswing. You're not going to be hitting the ball with any of this part of the swing. Again, hopefully not. But if you do rush, you can start to throw your body out of sequence. And sequence is a very key word here. With any power movement in hitting or throwing, whatever it may be, the sequence is generally the same. We wind up, we start to move our weight towards the target, we rotate, and then we release. We throw, we hit, whatever it is. It follows that same sequence. If you start to do the opposite, and this is what a lot of golfers do, if you get wound up and then decide to throw your hands outwards and throw your hands at the target, you can see how this natural sequence, how this natural motion is completely interrupted. We need to be leading with the lower half, then unwinding and taking our time, allowing the club, allowing the hands to move through last. So a nice drill that you can use, pop the club across your shoulders, turn away as much as you can. Oh, restricted, turn the right hip. Oh, bit more, lift the left heel. Oh, oh, now we're good. All the way up to the top. Now, as I start to move through the ball, I'm gonna shift my weight. I'm gonna turn my lower body and then I'm going to allow my right shoulder and the club to move through. And it is that sequence that we want to be following. It's as simple as that. Another drill that you can use, again, it gets the sequence pretty much in the right order, is if you take a ball and imagine that you're skimming a stone across a pond, across a lake, across the ocean, across a river, across whatever body of water that you fancy. You're in position, you turn away, and then you move and you're in this skimming action. And if I just basically replace the club with that motion, here we are at the point of impact. It's a very simple feeling, but it's a really effective one to try and get those movements. So I'm just gonna get that feeling of skimming that stone. And this is a really tricky hole here. If I hit the fairway, you've got to like the video. Ah. <sighs> I guess you could still like it if you want. I'm getting nervous on this simulator in the widest fairway in golf. You gotta, you gotta like the video. Anyway, back to power things. I also really like the skimming stone drill because it feels like you move your weight down a little bit into the ground. This is all about pulling energy up from the earth. I've done actually a few videos on this. Please check out the Swing Quest channel for more of them. However, something which we've not discussed yet throughout all of this and potentially one of the most important things is strike. Now this isn't discussed enough when talking about how to swing smoothly, how to have that effortless power. A lot of the very best golfers in the world, they can find the center of the club face. Now the energy transfer in the center of the club face is going to be much higher than if you're hitting it out the heel, out the toe, out the bottom or the top. Let me put it this way. If you swing super fast, but you strike the ball here, it won't go as far than if you were swinging slightly slower and you hit the middle of the face. So having a smooth swing, having an action which delivers, yes, speed, but also consistency of strike is gonna enable you to propel that ball forwards whilst looking in control. So we've got quite a few different movements that we can work on there, but there's gonna be one more which will really put the cherry on top of this smooth swinging cake and that is the finish position. So I'm gonna move through this shot. I'm really gonna try and apply that power in stages, but I'm gonna hold my finish position and I can guarantee it makes a difference. It's amazing how much smoother and how much more in control a golf swing is when you hold the finish position. It's such a simple thing. It's something that if you had lessons as a junior, you were probably told, but it still does ring true. If you can come up to a full finish and hold yourself right here, that'll mean that a lot of stuff which has gone on within your swing has been under control. So we've got lots of things to work on there. We've got the backswing, we've got movement down through the ball, building up that power gradually with those drills. But finally, let's move up stick that finish position and look down at your target. Right guys, hope you've enjoyed. If you want more help smashing your driver, check out these swing videos right here.